Amen. Welcome, everybody. We're going to be turning to uh, Isaiah 119. You there, Sister Trina? I am. Amen. Go ahead and read that for us. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Read that one more time. This is the formula. I call it Formula 119. All right. Mm-hmm. Read that for us. Isaiah 119. Amen. What does it say? Amen. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Now, look, I'm not going to prolong it today, but I'm going to tell you something that's going to be straight facts. You know, they have the hashtag movement. Just type in hashtag facts. I don't know. I just always wanted to say a hashtag. It probably ain't going to go nowhere, but I'm doing it anyway, man. We want you to understand that you can eat the good of the land, but you have to be willing and obedient. And we're going to break this thing down the formula. The first thing I want you to see in this scripture is a very powerful word. It is two letters. It says, if, 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 how powerful Mm -hmm. is if, if is a conditional clause or supposition that says in the event something happens or just in case something happens, you will receive or get access to this thing, but you will not get access to the thing unless you meet the if Does that make sense? (laughs) Amen. So the Lord is saying, I can have something for you, but if you don't do these things, you won't get access to them. I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how much you read your Bible. I don't care how much you prayed. The Lord will not break his word. And he said, you'll get the good of the land, but it is only if you are willing and obedient. If you're not willing and obedient, you can forget about eating. And you can definitely forget about getting the good thing that comes from what I've given the land. Amen. We want the blessings. We want the the outcomes of the prophecies without doing the work that it takes to reach where the prophetic word will accomplish or come to pass. Most people don't know that most prophecies are conditional. So I get Mm -hmm. leery when I hear people spew out prophecies over 10,000 people touch your neighbor and say it's your year I might be ready to die tomorrow it's not gonna be my year if I'm gone tomorrow amen not on earth I got something better there is no time in heaven so when you spew it out it's like okay it's my time regardless of what I am regardless of what I'm doing regardless if I'm saved or not that is not the truth that is not a true word the word that comes from God says if you position yourself In alignment with my word, my will, and my way, I will grant to you all the things that I have in store for you. Yes. If, if. The second word is you. Look at the text. I'm just going to break these down, and I'm giving you the formula. You can write them down. You can not write them down. I want you to write that in there, guys, if you're online. It's on me. It's on me. He says, if you be willing and obedient, which means you can't depend on what your mama did. You can't depend on what your daddy did. You can't depend on their relationship with God. Their relationship was great, but it has nothing to do with what he told you. Oh, God, use my father. My father, oh, Reverend Eugene, God God, use him to heal the sick and raise the dead. two times. That's not you, Jonathan Guy. Who did you lay hands on? Did you pray for who I told you to pray for? Did you do what I told you to do? You can't live off of what uh, uh, someone else did. Just because your mama saved and she's going to rest in peace doesn't mean that that you're saved and that you're going to rest in peace. Hallelujah. And it works the other way. Somebody say that. It's on me. It's on me. It's on me. It is directly on me. No more can you blame your husband. No more can you blame your wife. No more can you blame what your, how you grew up. You can't blame what your, your, your cousin did to you. If I hadn't got shot when I was young, I would have been good. If I had just not have dropped out of school, I would have did good. You can sit there complaining or you can get up and say, it's on me. The Lord right. says, I got the good of the land, but everything else is on you. I've done my part, says the Lord. Now, are you going to do your part or are you going to sit there in a place of, of not taking accountability Mm. for your actions. Amen. Are y'all with me? I want y'all to hear that, believers. It's on you. There are people who are in hell blaming others. Amen. Right. 
There are people yeah. on fire of inhale saying, Lord, if it wasn't for the woman you gave me, doesn't that <laughs> sound familiar? Adam, <laughs> what did you, why did you bite the fruit? Well, if it wasn't for the woman you get, oh, now it's the woman I gave you. You weren't looking for one. <laughs> you didn't need a helpmate, <laughs> right? I just, right. just pulled her yeah. out of the air. You needed her. <laughs> and instead of obeying me, you obeyed her. And this is a problem, all right? So I, I want y'all to get that. It's on you. If you're going to eat the good of the land and walking in obedience, as we close it out, I started with the ingredients of success, and now I'm ending with the formula. I call it Formula 119 from Isaiah 119. He starts off with two powerful words. If you, if you, if you. And then he says, look, I'm taking them, I'm taking your word by word. Amen. Make sure your phone is muted. I'm hearing some, some loud noises. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he says, if you, and I want you to get these next two, be willing. I want you to write it down. Be willing. And I want you to understand the reason he says this word willing, and he puts be willing it's very, very, very critical. He's talking about a willingness. You can't have, you can't be willing without a will, without a heart, without right. pride. I can't say what the words, what the world say. <laughs> you got to have, I can't say what that, <laughs> that word. You got to have some fortitude, some strongness, some strength. You can't be willing to quit at every sign of trouble. Right. People always say, hey, are you, will you do this? Yeah, I'm willing to do it. But you don't have any will. You don't have any intestinal fortitude that when something comes along, it makes you run away. And the Lord is saying, I need somebody that has staying power. Amen. Uh -huh. You know what? Let me say this, man. I am so tired of seeing believers <laughs> that if their leader says one thing, <laughs> one thing out of pocket, so, mm, come on, doctor. I was waiting on it. I was waiting on it. I'm willing, oh, I'm willing to serve. I'm willing to be a part. I'm willing to give all. Isn't that what, what Peter said to the Lord? The Lord said, which one of y'all with me? He said, oh, Lord, I'll go to the cross with you. I'm willing mm -hmm. to go even to the cross. Jesus looked at him and said, man, by the time the, cro the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Okay. You're not even going to make it till morning because Peter was willing, but he had no will. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He had no will. He had no staying power. And look at this. He didn't say, if you are going to be willing. Right. Be. He just said, will you be? Mm. This is instantaneous. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm not waiting on tomorrow. If you tell me right. to do something, I'll do it. The Lord, the Lord reprimanded me this morning in a dream where I'm not going to go in depth, but in the, in the specific dream, a person was praying for something. And this is not a fake person. This is a real person praying for something. They had talked to me about it. And I said, no, I don't feel, no. That's that, uh-uh. <laughs> Some of y'all, my wife know that part of me. Most of us haven't really seen that because we virtual. Stand by <laughs> if you see me in person. You're like, oh, he's very, he just won't move. No, if, it's, if I feel if it's a no, it's going to be a hard no. Not a mean one, but a hard no. I said, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. And in a drink, I thought the person was lying, but they weren't. And mm -hmm. the Lord revealed it to me. And in the dream, the man said, I pray to the Lord that he would change your heart. But the mm. Lord said, you wouldn't do it. Mm. And when I woke up, I said, mm. I said, I, you mean, Lord, there was something that you felt you couldn't tell me to do because I had my mind already made up? Wow. Mm. I, I'm not, you're telling me I'm not always at the ready to be obedient to whatever you say to me. If you tell me to jump off of a bridge, I'll, I won't look. I'll just take off jumping. If you say run on the water, I'll just take off running on the water. But I always thought that was me. Oh, I'm willing to do it. But John, God, do you got the willingness? Do you have the will to be always ready to move? 
We, we have this thing in the military. I don't know every branch d- does it. But when we get ready to exercise or do something, they'll say, are you ready? And we all scream yep. together, always ready. And mm-hmm. that means whatever you say next, we getting ready to do. And we also have another saying that's just in the Navy. When, a, when the commanding officer gives you a order, I need you to go down and do this. When it's serious, we usually say, aye, aye. Aye, aye yep. means I understand and I will obey. <laughs> I understand what you said. I got the message fully. And I'm willing to obey exactly what you said. That when we signed the dotted line and we raised our hand and promised to protect and serve and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, so help me God. We are saying that if the officer that's above me comes and says, you have to go down there and secure that that hatch yes. is full of water and you don't mm-hmm. have enough air to make it out. You'll just have enough air to finish it. You can't look at him and say, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. Da, da, da. <laughs> you promised. You said I'm willing to live and die for this cause. But when the, the metal meets the meat. When it comes time to actually do it, we find out you weren't willing to defend the country. You weren't willing to step up and live or die for it. You know, people say, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. Really? Uh (laughs) It's easy to say that when you're sitting in an air-conditioned church. But when I was talking to some of the pastors from India and Pakistan who had to secure their, their Facebook account so that the Muslims wouldn't find out who they were and murder them. Mm. I said, wow. Wow, Lord, you mean they could get murdered over a Facebook post? Mm. And yet they're posting it and saying, for God, I live Mm -hmm. for God, I die. Are you willing? Do you have do you have a a be willing attitude? This is what God's saying. This is the formula. I hope y'all seeing it. If you have accountability, which is you or it's on you. If if you hold on to the fact that if you do these, you know what you're going to get. And if you're willing You're going to be all right. But I want to give you number four. This is number four. I'm going to get out of your hair. You need two things. Come on, read it, Sister Trina. We're going to freshen it up a little bit. Read it for me one time. If you be willing and obedient. Stop right there. You got to be what? Willing and obedient. You need both. Write it down. You need both. I'm telling you how to eat the good of the land. If you apply this to everything, if you take accountability, if you're always ready and have the intestinal fortitude, the heart to see things through, and if you have the two things you need, willingness and obedient, listen to me. If you're willing to do something, but you're not obedient and not willing to do what I say, then it doesn't matter that you're willing. <laughs> are y'all getting right. me? And if, right. you are, if you are obedient, but you don't have the heart to see things through, it's never going to work. You got to have both. It doesn't matter if you obey the Lord who told you to start the business, but you don't have the intestinal fortitude to see it through. You're obedient, but you ain't willing. And it doesn't matter if you're willing to put in all the work and you got a willingness and you got the heart. But when the Lord tells you, I need you to do this and you don't want to do it and you disobey God, You'll never arrive at the good of the land. That's right. Come on. People miss that. They, you have people out there who will die before they quit. Right. They, they just got heart. They are all in. But if you tell them something that doesn't fit what they see in their own minds, they will not obey what you say. Mm. and end up failing and then stand before God with a straight face and say, Lord, I don't know why I failed. (laughs) You are obedient. Well, God, you didn't tell me nothing. No, I did tell you. I sent your pastor to you. Yeah. I gave him the wisdom to give you just one little nugget. He wasn't telling you how to run your business. She wasn't telling you how to do your thing. But she said, the, the, the Lord just dropped it in our spirits. And we said, no, you should probably go this way. And you say, well, mm, no, I'm not really feeling that. I feel like God is telling me. And you don't even know mm. God is augmenting your path for a moment. Mm. Jesus. But because you won't do it, now you're working with all your might on a cursed path. Mm. Because God told you to do something 
and you couldn't accept it because it came from a man. Mm. I got some advice from, I would say it's my spirit, the spiritual, spiritual grandfather, mentor, right? Mentor, mentor, somebody I admire from the far. And he told me some things about kingdom ambassadors. He said, I prayed about this and this is what, I ain't gonna tell y'all everything. We'll, we'll let it play out when we do our vision talk, talk, when we talk about vision. But he began to drop some things and he said, you need to abandon trying to fit in with the traditional. They'll never, <laughs> this is who you need to go to. Find, talk to them and look at them. And, and what I did, when I was just obedient and just looked at what he said, I was like, this is it. I'm sitting complaining about virtual church. And do you know the largest church in the world just overtook uh, um, uh, the, the church down in Texas with Joel Osteen. It's a church called Life.Church. And you know how they overtook them? With 70,000 virtual members. <laughs> 70,000. They started reaching, they reached millions and 70,000 joined in the mission of taking the gospel to their areas. And I said, man, I said, there's people that want to do that. In my mind, that don't work. 35 years of experience. <laughs> The Lord said, I don't care about your experience. I know right. you ain't going to quit on me. You got the heart. But can you obey me when yes. I say something that doesn't jive with your will? Can you do like Jesus and say, Lord, not my will? Yes, sir. Nevertheless, I want to do this. But nevertheless, not my will. But thy will be done. Yes. Whew. I'll bring people to you that got the same vision. I'll position you in the wrong lane. You're trying to talk to people that don't see your vision. They can't see it. They don't know. Well, what do you mean you're going to have service? <laughs> Not service, but service would it be when you're going to have service. Babe. You know, these are the type of people that you change the time from 1130, 1030 oh. to 12. Well, church mm -hmm. supposed to happen at 1030. Really? Mm -hmm. What is that? Second opinions? The 55th chapter, the 38th verse. <laughs> church is supposed to happen. Amen. These are the people who said we're not going to do praise and worship because you got to have devotion. Mm. And now you got the people saying you got to have this form of praise and worship. And the Lord is saying, I want to be innovative. I have things that are outside of your realm, stuff you have never seen before. Innovative ways to sing and worship me that you've never even tried before. Yes. And here is this man looking at me saying, he said, son, the church doesn't want to go on Zoom. And the world mm. is going into the metaverse. They're going yeah. into virtual reality. They're holding yes. meetings. And Snoop, look at this. Snoop Dogg is having concerts in the metaverse with huh. millions of people attending his concert as virtual <laughs> avatars. And the church talking about, I need to be on a conference call. I don't know how to. <laughs> they don't want to even get on Zoom. And the world is literally going into the. There, there's people who are becoming millionaires right mm -hmm. now by selling land in virtual reality. Mm. And we struggling with just showing up to the thing. And the Lord is saying, man, if my children would just be open to me, like the world is open to the devil, mm -hmm. we would go so much farther. Are y'all hearing me? Ooh, thank you. Jesus. Man, yes, man, man, man. Say you need both. Oh. Look, I'm almost finished. I'm very quick. I'm being very quick. Both. You gotta oh. have both, man. You gotta yeah. have both. Man. You got to have both. If you get a person that's willing to do something and, and willing to listen, that's what obedience is. Willing to listen, not so prideful. And then that person is a person that takes accountability for their actions. That don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't pass the buck, but say the buck stops here. It was my fault. It's whether we succeed or lose, it's on me. I'm not blaming God. I'm not blaming my mother. I'm not blaming. You can't defeat a person that operates like that. And especially mm -hmm. when they're getting their instructions from God. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what can you do with me? How can you defeat me? What did the Bible say? If God be for us, mm -hmm. then who can be against us? Oh, this is my son who's willing to die for whatever. I can tell him, do something that will kill you and he'll do it. She'll do it. That means God will come to you with everything that he wants done. He'll walk past a person that's more qualified <laughs> and go to you who's less qualified, but got a heart and willing to obey. 
Yes. Any day. I'm telling you. Yes. Man, I love the word of God. I love teaching. Love, you know what I mean? Nothing. He could take somebody that can't read and he can right. teach them everything <laughs> that, that a brilliant scientist knows. And all of a sudden, this person, the, Benny Hinn had a stuttering problem. Couldn't preach. Did you know that? <laughs> Couldn't preach. You get up and preach and, uh, 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 and he, and so he started praying because nobody wanted to talk to him 12, 14 hours a day. Oh then God loosed his tongue and he got up and preached and nobody shouted or fainted. But all of a sudden people started coming up saying, hey, I was in the audience and my, I got healed. And that's why he started having a person there with a the microphone. <laughs> to ask to, to share with everybody how they got healed. The next thing you know, he said thousands of people showed up. He says, I'm little me, I'm a stutterer. And none of my family, they're all not Christian. They're all devout Muslims. And God saved this whole family. You telling me what God can do with one person that's willing and obedient. Come on. Amen. All right, let me give you my last two points. Number five, this, this is the good part. You got to write it down. Say, the Lord said, you gonna eat now i know that's not good english but you need to write that down you got to say i i'm gonna eat that's i apostrophe m gone g-o-n-e eat e-a-t i'm gone eat i'm going to eat i'm going to eat it's a done deal come on read it for us sister trina if you be willing and obedient what ye shall eat the good of the land if you're willing and obedient, give me the first two after that. You what? Ye shall you eat. Shall. Give me them first two. What? You what? If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat. You, you shall. You right. shall. You shall eat. That means yes. you gone. <laughs> you gone eat. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord says, look, you got to be willing and obedient. You got to do all of the first parts. And I gave long, drawn out words to it. But if you do those things, you do that formula. You're going to eat, eat, Amen. eat, eat means consume, devour. I'm talking about that Hebrew word. It means to consume and devour. What does that mean? That means you're going to run out. You're going to eat it all up and you're going to run out. And the reason God does that is because when you run out, it makes you go back to him <laughs> to be willing and obedient so he can give you some more food, the good of the land that you can eat some more. That means you got to let me ask you the question. If you run out and you got to go back to God, then how much can you eat? Right. Unlimited. Because God says, I have a cattle on a thousand hit. What I have will never run out. Jesus said, store up treasures in place where moth doesn't corrupt and thieves can't break in. And I'm going to give you fruit that will never run out. I'm going to give you water that will never run dry. I'm going to give you manna in the desert. It doesn't matter if the whole world is going to hell. You and your house. Yes. Because Amen. you're willing and obedient. You're going to eat. When the Antichrist begins chopping off heads mm. and preventing people from buying or selling and you can't buy food or water, the Lord says, don't worry about it. This is my servant who was willing mm -hmm. and obedient. God will yes. take a, 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 a loaf of bread and a pot of chili and make it last three and a half years. You be sitting there, this chili is the best chili. I, an angel comes at night and start cooking you up with some Tabasco sauce on it. Come on, y'all. Are y'all with me? Amen. He says, I'll be, this is what happened to the woman in the famine. When, when Elijah came to her, he said, give me something to eat first. She said, what? Watch the willingness and obedience. He said, the prophet said, he didn't say God said, the prophet said, give me to eat first. She said, all I was going to do is bake a little cake, not a cake like y'all think with icing. It was just some meal and some oil. She was going to bake it. It's going to be some cornbread. Probably un, un, unflavored cornbread because she ain't nobody to have seasoning. When we eat this, me and my son are gonna eat this and die. He said, give it to me first. And she was willing to do it, to give her babies last to the prophet in the word or the name of the prophet. And she and her son watched him eat. And then she went back and said, there's more oil in the bin. 
<laughs> I thought I used the last bit of cake mix, but there's more cake mix. In, in the, where did this come from? God said, don't you know I'm a creator? When you yes, eat yes. your food up, I'll create some more for you to eat. Glory to God. Come on, you ought to give God praise because yes. you're going to eat until you're full if you be willing and obedient. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let me give you this right here. Let me give you this last one. Last two. You're not just going to eat. Let me stop right there. You're not just going to eat any old thing the word of God says that you shall eat good things no yes. that's not what he said come on read it for us sister Trina you shall eat he, what you shall eat the good of the land the good <laughs> so I looked it up I looked up why did he say it like that he could have said and you shall eat good good of good things of the land he could have said it like that he said you shall eat the good that means the very best that comes out of the land and in, mm -hmm. and then when you look at the word you find out he's not just talking about food <laughs> well wait a minute how can i eat it he's talking about i'm going god is going to give you something that you're going to be able to use look at what it means the good thing it literally means the good the goods like goods and services. It means prosperity. It means, this is this word good, property. Yeah. Oh, y'all not here. Look at this. It means fairness, which means right. God is going to make sure everything that comes to you is fair and yes. just and in line. No more people giving you shady deals. God is going to filter all them things out and all you're going to eat. Is that which is good and fair. This job is going to be good to you and fair to you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Look at this. This word literally means discernment. God said, I'm going to give you discernment. That not only will you be able to eat the good, you will be able to discern what is good for you and what's good to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord says right now you're eating that which might be good to you. But when you get this good that I'm going to give you, Hallelujah. When you eat this, it's going to make you to know, no, nah, I can't eat that. I probably right, shouldn't right. eat pig feet uh, uh, sautéed <laughs> in lard and covered in salt. It might taste good to you, but it ain't too good for you. But this time, the Lord says, I'm going to give you discernment and you're going to get the very good, the good thing, the right thing. Oh, my God. The right thing. Look at this. If you're online right now, type in there, the right thing. Knowing the right thing to take is worth a billion dollars. There's a story. I've told it before, but I'm going to tell it again. Where these people, they had just bought a, a $5,000 uh, copy machine. This is back in the day, the big one, the industrial size one. It's like a printer, copier, everything. It was huge. And when they got it, they couldn't get it to work. They said, we broke it. We broke it. So they called in this guy to fix it. He's a little handyman. He had on coveralls. He came in and they said, what will it cost? He said, let me look at it. He looked at it, did his work. And he went behind it and said, <laughs> and it came on. They said, oh, that was it. He said, yes. He said, that'll be a thousand dollars. They said, a what? I beg your pardon. Excuse me. A thousand dollars. They said, why would it cost a thousand dollars for you to push a button? He said, it's a dollar to push the button. It's a thousand dollars to know which button to push. Right. <laughs> so pay me my thousand dollars. <laughs> Glory to God. And what the Lord is saying in that in that concept is this. The Lord is going to give you the insight to know wow. the right You'll know what's good for you. The Lord, man, I hear this in the spirit. Some of the single women, God is going to give you the wisdom that when a man comes along, if that joker means you no good, you will see yes. it written on his forehead. This joker is oh, shady. Man. He's trying to lie like he likes your baby so he can sleep with you. But the Lord says, mm -hmm. I'm going to cause you to filter through. All of the guys that got money and cars and all of this, and they look good and they six foot tall and muscular, and they're gonna look and show you a diamond in the rough who might have a little belly, but he'll take care of you and your babies. Yes. <laughs> who might have to work as a plumber, but he'll yes. work with you to build a business to make it a million dollar company. Somebody that you, he might not have all his teeth, but he's willing to go to the dentist. 
with you, yeah. baby, <laughs> and get a tooth or two put back in the right place. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to be able to see the right thing, Man. the good thing, that which is going to prosper you. Not every job is good. Right. Not every contract is meant to be signed. Wow. Not everybody that, look at this, not everybody that says to God, Lord, Lord, <laughs> is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Everybody that hugs you is not mm. wrapping their arms around you. Some people are hugging you to cut your wind off, to stop you from moving forward. Some people hold on to you to be a weight so you won't be able to go to the destiny without them. If I'm not going to make it, I don't want you to make it either. The Lord is going to give you the discernment. Yes. Hallelujah. He's giving you the formula that if you are willing and obedient to him, you'll look at him and say, I like you, but you're not good for me. So I got to cut you loose and let you go. Oh, man. Glory to God. The right thing, the right thing, the right thing. The Lord says this right thing, this good thing is good. He's mm -hmm. going to bless you with property. Mm -hmm. I just that just happened to us now. We just got property. <laughs> Glory to God. We just got property. Providence is not just bought property. Hallelujah. Yes. In Southfield, Michigan. Glory to God. Look at the Lord just open up the door. He's going to give you beauty. I didn't give you all of it. You know what else the good thing means? The right mm -hmm. thing means? That word means joy. Yeah. I thought somebody would give God praise. We'll leave it at that. You don't want to hear no more. Look, because you know, we think we overlook joy, but you can have a million dollar job and have zero joy. That's right. Gladness. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, you got, but you could be broke and worshiping God every day and God providing for you and your children. Some of y'all have been more happier when you were broke than you were when you had all that big, yeah. nice job. Glory to God. That's See? what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get a job and forget who gave you the job. That's right. Right. As soon as we get our little job, all of a sudden, you see you look different now. Mm -hmm. You know. People get their little doctorate degree. I get my do I got my doctorate right, so I get my doctorate. I come on here, glory to God. Uh, God has has said. Now look, if you was doing that before the doctorate degree, that's your style, brother. Go on, I jump up with you, and say hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll be right with you. But don't be coming on to you as a teacher first, and now all of a sudden you gotta get ready, get ready. Now you TD Jakes because you got a doctorate degree. You faking the funk. Right. Glory to God. God is looking for somebody that's real. Somebody that is not changing when he blesses them. And they got the same joy they had when they were broke. Yes. Paul said, no matter what state I'm in, I've learned. He didn't say I, I knew it right away. He said, I learned to be content. And contentment with God is great gain. It brings you joy. When you can sit there and you say, "Wait, I lost the job, but I'm content. Mm. Why? Because yeah. I know that my God shall supply all my needs, not everybody else's needs. Remember, it's on me. It's, it's, I'm taking accountability. He's going to supply all of my needs according to his riches. It's my mm. need, but he pays for it with his riches. I'm going to leave you alone. Let me go to my last one. He gives you not just any good to eat. He gives you the good of the land. That word land means the whole earth and everything in it. The Lord is saying what he wants for the body of Christ is for us to consume this world and everything in it with the gospel of the kingdom of God. And that's what the Lord wants you to do. That's the formula 119. Everybody's like, what's Formula 119? It's based on Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you're going to eat of the good, the good. Look at this. It's the good and the land. <laughs> Y'all looking at it. You shall eat of the good. Yes. And the good shall be of the land, the land. Amen. It's going Amen. to be the goods that comes out of this land. What land? Why mm -hmm. am I focusing on the? It's the land that you dwell. Right. Where, let me say it like, let me, let me bring it home. Wherever your foot treads, mm. 
Wherever your foot treads, I don't care if you got to tread upon scorpions and serpents and all of the works of the enemy. I don't care if you got to walk past people who knew you when you was a drunk and loved to get high and love to chase women, but now you got saved and they want to talk about you. It doesn't matter. You got to look at them and say, this land belongs to me. You remember that song, this land is my land. <laughs> <laughs> this land is my land. The song says, this land is my land. This land is your land. But you got to say, no, it's not. This land is just my land. And I'm not letting any devil in heaven, in the heavens, in the second heaven, or on earth, or in somebody, stop me from eating on the land that God gave me. Here is the problem with the land. Every land that God gives you, there is a giant living on that land. Yes. Moses, there's a promised land. I promised it. It belongs to you. But when you got there, somebody else wants to eat off of your land. And you got to have the willingness to say, I'm not letting you eat on my land. You can eat. Right. Just not on this land. This is my milk. This is my honey. <laughs> this is my fruit. These are my fields that my children are going to build businesses upon. This is my ground that my family, my lineage, who's going to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You're not building a stronghold on my land, devil. You got to evacuate that stronghold and I'm going to blow it up that I may build a new stronghold that which represents the kingdom of God on my land. Yes. Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord says as I get ready to leave you. You know what you do on a, on a piece of land, Sister Kenesha? Watch me. Y'all watch me. Watch me. Watch me. This is what you do on a new piece of land. When you conquer a land, the first thing you do is go to the highest point and you raise up a flag. Yes. <laughs> you raise up your flag. And this is mm. why the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you lift up a standard. The word standard is the word flag. That's what we call it in the mm. military. He said, yes. you lift up the military flag to say this ground belongs to the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And you have no dominion, nor rulership, nor sovereignty over the land that belongs to the kingdom of God and the kingdom of man. I'm preaching harder than y'all. Amen. Oh, come on. Glory to God. Right. He says, this land belongs to God. And therefore, this is my land. And I'm willing to fight and, die, fight and die, baby. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to fight and die. I know you think you bad, butchie. Yeah. But if you step on this land, if you, you remember this, Cross this line. Okay. Some of y'all 70s and 60s and 80s, baby. Cross, I double dog dare you to cross this line. It's a man. This is why Jesus, watch this, Sister Trina. This is why Jesus said to Pilate, if my kingdom was of this world, yes. my servants would have fought. <laughs> Glory to God. But this is what's wrong. I thought Peter had just tried to fight, Lord. He pulled out a sword. And tried to attack the man that was going to get you. But this is what Peter didn't understand. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Y'all remember last week. But mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of spiritual stronghold. My war, the devil is, you can't kill the devil with a bullet. You can't kill yeah. him with an AK-47. You can't kill him with a Draco or a 9 millimeter or whatever type of millimeter. You can only kill him in the spirit. That's right. Mm. Come on. Praying in the Holy Ghost, building mm. up your most holy faith that he yes. cannot defeat mm. you. So, believers, I want you to type this in there. Say, I'm going to move by this Formula 119. I'm going to go move by it. I'm going to be willing yes. in this season. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to have heart. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. It's time out for quitting. Matter of fact, I'm going to quit quitting. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If I'm going to quit anything, it's going to be quitting. I'm going to see it through and win, lose or draw. Even if I fail, I'm failing forward. 
And when yes. if I fail forward, that means I'm further along than I was last time. And I'm going to eat the good of the land. The devil has to move off of my property. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. If my son is selling drugs, the devil and the drugs got to go. The boy can stay. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> the boy can stay, but the devil and the drugs got to go. If he out there, if the girl is out there playing hooky and stripping on the pole, the pole and the strip got to go, but she can stay because yeah. she's a part of this land. Yeah. Yes, yes. And we Glory are God. going to win. God bless you, Facebook. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Share this video. Amen.